Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Physio. In this module, I want to go through some of the basic concepts that you use when you're working with Physio. So I'm on the home screen and I'm going to create a basic diagram, which is one of the templates that you get with Visio. If you click on the new icon, you can see that there's quite a lot of different ones. And as you scroll down, you can see that they're categorized across the bottom there, such as um, flow charts, etc., etc. You'll see all these different ones, different types of flow charts, lots and lots and lots of diagrams, really useful diagrams that you can utilize and customize. But I think before you do any of those, you need to understand how Visio works. So that's what this video is about, the basic concepts. So I'm clicking on this basic diagram. It will ask me, do I want to have it in metric or US? Going for metric, creating. And what you get when you open a template in Visio is a series of stencils down this left-hand side and a drawing canvas in the middle. Now these stencils vary in number, so this one hasn't got that many because it's the basic one, but you've got quick shapes at the top. And then as you come in down, basic shapes, arrow shapes. And as you can see, each time you click on one of these, you're getting a different set of shapes. And then you've got an option at the top, more shapes, where you can get shapes from other template diagrams. For example, flow charts that I just clicked on. There's loads of stencils in here that you can bring into this one if you think you have a need this is the basic one i could click on that one there for block let's click on that one just to bring one in so this is bringing another stencil into this one so now you've got basic shapes and you've got block go back to basic shapes so the stencil number and the amount of stencils you get varies with depending on whichever template that you've picked now so on the view tab, you can click on grid lines if you want to have grid lines on there and you can just select or deselect things as you wish. You saw me deselect the size and position pane, which is useful when you're doing floor plans and things like that, but not necessarily so for a basic diagram. So how it works is this. You select a shape from your stencil. So a square shape, if I bring that onto the screen, that is a square, no matter how big or where you try and resize that, that will always be a square. If you want a rectangle, you'd have to bring a rectangle shape on. And likewise, that would always be a rectangle. When you play around with these size handles. As you move the shapes, you can see these lines across the top there that basically line up to tell you you're in line with the top or the bottom. So this is slightly a bit bigger than that one. So I'll come down. Now that line going across the center is saying it's centered there. So there you go. It snaps into position. You've got this rotation tool, which you would all, always expect with shapes in Word and other programs. So there you go. Rotate. And now what you do usually with these sort of shapes, if I go back to home, you have lots of different features in, in terms of coloring in. So if I just change the color for a second on this one so you can see. So I've changed that color. Under effects, you've got shadow effects. So you can put different shadows on this. And then once you've got a little shadow on it, you can go back into effects and shadow. And then right down the bottom, you've got shadow options where you can actually change some of these settings. So if I go onto this, You've got transpo transparency there. If I bring that across, you can see how, what it's doing there. You've got blur. See, that's as I move that across. All of these settings are going to affect whatever you've got on there. I don't want to do too much on that, though. If you're not too bothered about colouring in manually, you can go to the Design tab and use one of these preset themes if you want. If I drop the arrow down, you can see them. I'll click on that one. So it's changed that shape but not this one because i manually changed the color there so if i just delete this one off and get myself a duplicate on this one so to get a duplicate i can just do control d and it will give me another one so then i can just line those up with those liners and you can see it's lined up if you don't like that design you can just change it to a different one and everything every shape will change to that one unless you 
have manually changed the color. If I click on that, it's a variant of it. That's another variant, a different variants. So all of these design themes and their variants are available from the design tab on the ribbon. If I go back to home, if you want to connect these shapes, there's two ways of doing it. There's a point to point connector and a shape to shape connector. So I'm going to use this connection tool. The first one shape to shape is when the whole shape goes green like that. And I drag across to another shape that goes green like that. It says glue to shape. When I let go, that means the shapes are connected. But this is how it would work. If I go back to the pointer tool, you, you need to take this off pointer. What's going to happen if I move that shape down there? It's always going to snap to the closest connection it can find. As you can see there as I go around. Now, if I delete that one. The other one, the other connection you can do is what's called a point to point connection. If I click on that, come down and you get these little gray squares. If you sit your mouse on that and drag across to another gray block, that's like glue to connection point. Let go there, go back onto the pointer tool, move this around. This is always going to be connected to that same pointer. As you can see there, no matter where I move these shapes, it's always the same pointer like that now if i click on that line you can actually um, make that line th different to that you can make it thicker if i pick a thicker line you can make it dotted if you wanted it dashed and you can also change the color of that line if you want just by selecting it like that now if you want additional connection points say I want two lines to come across you have to use this tool which is the connection point tool click on that hover your mouse to the edge of the box where you want to start from but you need that sort of symbol there that cross hold your control key down and click you get a little connection point there you can just about see it probably pick the wrong color here and then you do the same on this one where you want it to go you click and then what you can now do, if you go back up to the pointer tool, just to knock that off, and then back to the connector tool, you should get another little gray block there. And then you can come across an, another line across to the top, point to point, like that. Back onto the pointer tool, they should still stay together. So that one isn't connected. So that didn't sit onto it. So what I'm going to have to do there is pick it up again. So I can't see that connector tool at all so it's not sitting there so i need to just do that one again click on it get the control key down get that cross click see that's that orange thing i've got there back to the pointer tool click on that line again pick it up at the end and bring it on to that glued um let's see if i can move this around now so now it's staying with it if i just click on that line just make it a lot fatter than that so you can see it a little bit better I'll change the theme actually I think that stands out a bit better so if you want more than one line you're gonna to have to use that additional connector tool to get it and it's it sometimes it's a bit fiddly how you get on there you basically need the shape selected while you do it so if I just do that again shapes uh, selected click hold your control key down get the right symbol click it on go and click on that shape control key down get it where you want it to go click it on that's what you have to do basically and then the connector tool you should better go from that one you see a little green square across to that one glue point pointer so you can then move it around you've got three lines coming in like that that's what that's for. Now, this text block is for you to do a text box somewhere. Um, you can just do a text box anywhere. And you can be careful because I've just clicked again. You've got to knock that off. I'll knock it off. So there's a text box. I can actually fill that in with a color. And use a darker color than that as it stands out. And that's just a text box, but you're basically recreating this because all of these shapes have a text box in them like that. 
Now you can mo move the text box to the top left if you want, and you can create bullet lists in there if you want. And then as you go back into that and press enter on that, you will get a bullet list bill like so. So all of the text boxes are either sitting on a shape or independent because you've drawn one. It's totally up to you. But what you don't want to do is draw loads of blank text boxes everywhere. Now you can also do this if I click on this shape, this last tool, and this is the last thing I'll go through on this basic stuff. This allows you to move that text block. So if I click on that, we'll come down here. That will allow me to move that text box up there. And then I'll click on the pointer tool and I can't actually see the font on that because the font now is a completely different color but if I go in there and change the font color to from to black you can then see the font on there but you've moved it out that's of use I suppose if you've got a box sitting on a box and these are all overlapping and things like that and you just still want that information underneath but it's totally up to you but that's all I want to talk about in this little video, some of the basic concepts of Microsoft Visio. So we've looked at basic formatting, we've looked at connections, shapes, how to create additional connection points, and the two main connection types, point to point and shape to shape. So hopefully that little video is of use. Thank you for your time and I'll catch you on the next one.